Hey guys, today we'll be talking about the history of the music icon, Pink Floyd. Sit back and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Music Archive, the podcast to learn the history behind the music you love. I'm your host, Cameron Wallace, and let's get into the show. It's the 1960s. Love is in the air, the drug culture is hot off the press, and Roger Waters and Nick Mason meet while studying architecture in London. The two played unofficially with college mates until Richard Wright joined the Fletchling band to create a sextet, the Sigma Six. Waters played lead guitar, Mason played drums, Wright played rhythm guitar, and they all just jammed together. In 1964, Mason moved out and Bob Close moved into guitars, moving Waters to bass. Later, two of the Sigma Six members left to create a new band and Sid Barrett joined Close and Waters. Soon, Chris Dennis joined and sang for the band for two years, including their first audio session in 1964. But that was short-lived as Dennis left as he was assigned to an RAF post. In turn, Sid became the frontman of the band. Later, parents and tutors made Close quit and Sid filled in for the guitar. The band played under the name T-Set until while they were in a gig, someone else had the same name and so they just did not let that fly. They changed their name to Pink Floyd after two blues musicians, Pink Anderson and Floyd Council. And after a good set in 1966 at the Marquee Club, they caught the eyes of two men. One would become their manager soon. It's good to know in the 1960s, at this point in London, the underground was huge. And luckily enough, Pink Floyd were destroying. They were absolutely catching the eyes of everyone. In fact, in 1967, they signed to EMI and released their first single, Arnold Lane and Candy on Current Bun, on the B-side. The record deal saw them release See Emily Play on June 16, 1967, and that led them to play at the BBC Top of the Pops three times. It was at this point that the social pressures led to a little discomfort in the band, especially for Sid. Sid began to break down after prolific use of LSD, and his overall condition started to worsen. In August of 1967, they released their first LP, Piper at the Gates of Dawn. This LP was highly influenced by Sid and recorded at Abbey Road. It was at this point Sid was breaking from the seams, playing only one detuned note all night, refusing to speak to bandmates, and purportedly suffering from schizophrenia. With no sign of recovery, Sid was replaced by David Gilmore. This was a new chapter for Pink Floyd, under new management and a new frontman. In 1968, they released Saucer Full of Secrets, and in 1969, they released their LP More. This LP got traction after it was played live in the BBC coverage of the moon landing. And in November 1969, they released Umagumma, a mixture of live and studio recordings which reached number five on the UK charts. It was at this point they were getting reputation worldwide. Their name started to emerge in the American underground, and in Britain, they were huge. They played in the Bath, Antibes, Rotterdam, and Montreux festivals, and in 1970, they released Adam Hart Mother, their first number one album. On a literal creative role, they shot live at Pompeii, recorded a movie soundtrack, and began to working on their new album. This new album, initially entitled Eclipse, saw them making their biggest project yet. Waters wanted to make a conceptual album that would, quote, make people mad and focus on social pressure, insanity, death, greed, and mental anguish. While finding an album cover, their associate, George Hardy, gave seven designs for the album cover, but one was chosen by unanimous decision, a prism. In March 1st, 1973, Dark Side of the Moon released and lit the world on fire. This album had some of the biggest influence in music history. This woozy psychedelic sound paired with these lowly, deep, and well thought out lyrics created a perfect atmosphere for a perfect tour. They set off with one of those prolific tour schedules with stunning visuals like crashing airplanes, flaming gongs, and bright projections. Dark Side of the Moon is known today as one of the most influential albums of all time and one of Floyd's absolute masterpieces. Going for Gusto, they started recording their new album. While recording Shine On You Crazy Diamonds for their next album, a quiet, confused, heavy man with shaved head and eyebrows walked into the recording session. The man didn't talk at all and just kind of stood there and stared at them. It was a few minutes till they realized it was Sid. And that was the last time they talked to him. And he left as strangely as he appeared. It was at this point the band was beginning to get a little tense. Waters and Gilmore were constantly disputing over creative control and ownership over the name. Despite this, in 1975, they released Wish You Were Here, their fastest selling album to date. It hit number one in the US after only two weeks and was a huge hit to Western audiences. In 1977, the Animals Tour began 
with giant inflatable animals and sound effects, the tour adjusted expectations to audiences about what a tour can be. It was also in this tour where Waters spat into the crowd when asked to play their old stuff. This outburst from Waters led to their next project, The Wall, an autobiographical reflection by Waters as it charts the progress of a rock star dealing with loneliness and grief after the death of his father. Waters' father became a very frequent point of attention. Waters' father died in World War II and left him alone dealing with the grief. The Wall tour also highlighted the absolute separation the band was starting to feel from each other, as they literally were building bricks on stage between them. In 1983, they released the final cut. This album was directly attributed to Waters as he talked about themes of an undeveloped post-war dream. And then in 1983, the band fell apart. Tension over the ownership led Waters to unsuccessfully sue the others for the name. Waters left the band, but Gilmore, Mason, and Wright continued to playing. In 1987, they released A Momentary Lapse in Reason and spawned their biggest tour ever. Five million people showed up over the span of 200 shows. In 1994, they released The Division Bell. This album was their last material and also showed that they could exist without Waters. In 1996, they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. In 2005, the band got back together to play Dark Side of the Moon and Wish You Were Here songs. In the end, they set aside their differences and Waters and Gilmore played together, ending with a group hug. It's important to realize how influential Pink Floyd are on the entire music industry. Pink Floyd is known today as one of the most influential and well-respected bands of all time. Their material is timeless and they will forever be in music history. Thank you for listening to The Music Archive. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and tune in very soon for more history of the music you love.